want to share with you, yeah, in your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives.
Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Father God, you, uh, I pray, Lord, for the congregation, God. If you bless the pastor, then it's going to run down. It's going to flow into the congregation, oh God. So, Father God, I pray right now that as you bless the pastor, as you bless the first family, oh God, that, Father God, that their blessings and the anointing flow. Somebody shout, flow! Flow! flow. flow. Hallelujah. And it flows. Through this congregation, oh God, yeah. our healing and deliverance to take place right now in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, come on, clap your hands and give God a praise on today. Hallelujah. I am so excited for what God is going to be doing and sharing on today. And let me tell y'all something. I have a word from the Lord for you today. But the only thing I'm asking you today is if you if you push me hard enough, we might get out of here in five minutes. <laughs> uh, if you back me up just a little bit, then uh, we may be able to go home and give the, uh, some of you may have your, your chicken and your dressing and your turkey and your greens and yes. everything else that may be on the stove or in the oven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the crock pot. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, and if you don't have your Bibles on today, I got uh, Brother Trey. He's going to be helping me out really quick because I have some things that I want to show you. And since uh, through our infinite uh, wisdom of our pastor, we have a television up here Amen. where I can display a few little things for you guys. And so if you can't follow along in your Bible, if you can't follow along on your phone, it's going to appear right there on the television screen yeah. in the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, Thank you. in the first verse. Hallelujah. And we're going to have a couple of scriptures um, that we're going to go through on today. So the, the Bible says here, Isaiah 25, 1, and I'm reading from the King James Version for this version here. It says, uh, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee and will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thy counsels of old are faithful, are faithfulness and true. Yeah. Hallelujah. And before I give you guys my subject title really quick, I just want you to just think about a few little things. Think about some of the things that God has done for you. Think about some of the things that God uh, has done for you in your life. I just want you to think really quick. And my subject title today is God has been wonderful. Hallelujah. Why don't you just shout out really quick. God has been wonderful. He has been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So let me go back a couple of slides here. We ain't got there yet. Or wait. Okay, maybe. All right, I'll probably put that slide in there. So just keep it right there. Uh-huh. So here we go. Uh, here he is. We are in the first Sunday of many. We have exactly, uh, we have been exactly one year and two months into what has been deemed a global crisis. Uh, it has affected everything from fun and fellowship with our family to loved ones to school classes, church closing, business closing, and unemployment. Sickness and death is on an all-time high, and that's enough to turn around and tell somebody that I'm glad that you're here. I'm Hallelujah. Glad Oh, I'm so glad y'all with me on today. Just turn around and tell somebody, I'm glad that you're here. Because uh, as I look back over the past year, two months, uh, I believe we have some believers uh, have been taking this time for granted. We've been taking uh, this stuff for granted. There's some people who uh, should still be here, but they're not here with us any longer. Whether that's due to COVID, whether that's due to drugs, whether that's due to death or disease, uh, there are people that's in the hospital right now that are on machines to help them to live. But as I look around this congregation here, I don't see nobody hooked up to a machine. I don't see nobody that need no assistance with 
uh, with walking and talking and moving and having the activities of your of your of your uh, life. And I'm just here to say, God has been wonderful. Hallelujah! Some people are are on life support, which means that they need that machine to help them breathe, to help give them life. And I'm so excited that the only uh, person that is here to help me give life is Jesus. Only person right now here is to help me to sustain right now is Jesus. Hallelujah. And if they happen to unplug that machine, then that means that their life has expired. So I just want to drop this little golden nugget to you and say that be grateful for life, health, and strength. Amen. The songwriter says, when I look back over my life and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And he's, I love the fact that he said, I won't complain because it's not the fact that I can't complain because I can't complain. I can tell and say everything about what's been going on and what's been happening and how my money's been funny and how my change been strange and credit just won't get it. But I won't complain. Hallelujah. I can't complain, but I won't complain. And he goes on to say that uh, sometimes the clouds hang low and I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? And this takes me back to, you know, I, I was going through some terrible times in my life and my mother, she said something to me one day, Trey. I guess she felt like that, you know, something was going on in my life. And she said, you uh, want to know the reason why uh, so much, uh, you know, why we go through ups and downs in life? And I said, no, mom. I said, I really don't know the reason why we go through ups and downs. She said, that's to prove to you that you're actually still alive. I am. It's to prove to you that you're still alive. Because if everything is all hunky-dory and everything is just flying in the sky and everything is just perfect, then that must mean that you have made it to heaven. So when you experience ups and downs, just know that you're still living. So when I think about that, and I think about so much pain, it reminds me about, uh, you know, uh, about some young people in their lives uh, who uh, tragically, they, you know, they say, hey, you know, I've been through hurt, and I've been through this, and I've been through that, and everything else. So, you know, some of these kids, they do face so much stuff in this time Right now, a lot of us in this room is suffering, but I have a heart for the young people because they suffer a whole lot more. They go through some stuff that we didn't have to go through. We didn't have to experience. Some people may have experienced it, but everybody didn't experience it. Some teams now go through stuff, uh, and they have peer pressure. I mean, it's so evident right now, the peer pressure. Um, they have access to weed. Uh, their parents really don't want to be involved in their life. And a lot of times they have a decision making to figure out if they're homosexual, if they're heterosexual, if they're bisexual, if they're transsexual, if they're other kind of sexuals. And I haven't heard, you know, now I heard something that pansexual, right. non-binary, and all this yep. other kind of stuff. It's confusing to me. I'm not talking about people. I'm just letting you know that these that these young people, they are experiencing something that we didn't have to uh, experience in our life. And, and then now, you know, I was you know, doing some research and a lot of them, matter of fact, I was watching a video and the young man, he said, I don't prefer to be called uh, him or boy or man. I'm not really called to be preferred to call him. I mean, not the they, them, and all that. I said, wait a minute, how, that, that's a plural. Uh -huh. I mean, when you can go through English, am I right? When you're an English yeah. teacher major. That's a plural. You can't be both. So, no, I'm, I'm not saying anything bad against I'm just saying what these teenagers are facing right now and day. My God. And so I said all this to say because, you know, a lot of young people, they're, they're, they're facing so much stuff. And I want to point out one thing, uh, because the world is changing, yep. that teen suicide rate has spiked 56% over the past year. It says right here uh, that 56% uh, 50, 50, 50 of the kids between the ages, this would this would trip me out. Between the ages of 12 and 19. Yep. 
So can you imagine your child taking their life at such a young age? Why they're taking their life? I mean, they, there's bullying and there's this and that and there's cyberbullying and so much stuff that's happening. Then you know, they, we have people who don't accept them uh, or don't want to love them. A lot of these kids just need love. They need affection. They need attention. And a lot of us adults don't give it to them. And so as I look around the sanctuary right now, we, by we, we know that these young people need this love. They need this attention. And there's something that Jesus can give them. So why aren't we bringing them here to the house of God? Put that slide up for me. And I got this from the CDC uh, website. It says suicide, suicide affects all ages. It isn't just teenagers. It affects all ages. It said it, it is the second leading cause of death of people ages 10 to 34. The fourth leading cause amongst people ages 34 to 54. And the fifth leading cause amongst people 45 to 54. Suicide, people killing each other. What in your mind gives you the, 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 the thought that, you know what, I just want to end it all. But we have something here through the power, through the Holy Spirit, that we can change and transform those people's lives. And so that they can come and be able to learn about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. So what are we doing as a body of believers? Uh, Second Chronicles um, 7 and 14. It's from the English Standard version of the Bible. It says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven Thanks and God. will forgive Thanks their God. sins and heal their land. I want to give you guys a kingdom principle right here that it's time to pray. Amen. Oh my God. It is time to pray. It's time out for just patty cake and it's time out for, you know, us not doing nothing as a body of believers. I know that COVID did, you know, made some restrictions and things, but that doesn't mean that we have to stop doing the work of the Lord. It's time for us to pray. It's time for us to get down on our knees. There's so much stuff that's going on in the body of Christ that's just so unnecessary and we need time to pray. We need to be able to get down on our knees and say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as humbly as I know how to be able to wash my slate clean. Help me to develop a relationship with you. Help others to be able to develop a relationship with you. Help my neighbors to be able to develop a relationship with you. Father God, I'm humbling myself and I'm praying unto you for my family member that's battling with suicide, for my family member that's battling with addiction, for my family member that's battling with all kinds of things that don't need to be dealing with. God, I'm humbling myself. Jesus. It's time yes. to pray. Yes. It's time. Hallelujah. And let me just throw this out at you really quick because when we pray, we can show somebody else that uh, we're praying that God has changed our life around. Those people can say, God has been wonderful. wonderful. Yes. Let's look at the word wonderful really quick. It's an adjective, wonderful. It means inspiring, <coughs> delight, uh, pleasure, or admiration. Extreme good, marvelous. Uh, uh, wonderful has a root word, which is wonder. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Wonder. A, a, a wonder is a feeling of surprise mm -hmm. mingled with admiration caused by something beautiful, unexpected, mm -hmm. unfamiliar, mm -hmm. uh, not anticipated, um, and inexpectable. You see, there has been some times in my life when I thought that I was, wasn't going to have enough. There have been some times in my life when I thought that I didn't have enough and began to get down on my knees and I began to humble myself. And I said, God, I don't know where the food is going to come from. But Father God, you said that if I would just humble myself and pray that you're going to be able to do some things, you're going to change some things for me in my life. You're going to change some situations in my life. And Father God, I believe that you have done it in the name of Jesus. By the time I finish praying and come up off my 
come up off my knee. Now this before Cash App and everything else, you know, I'll either get a knock at the door or I get a phone call. Like, hey Shane, what you doing? Um, nothing, just finished praying. Well, you know, uh, I got some groceries over here that uh, I had. I mean, this is some extra stuff, you know, or you know, hey, I was down to the food bank, whatever the case may have been. But God supplied. There was something that was unexpected. It was something that was unfamiliar. It was something unexplainable. A miracle had happened. A surprise had happened in my life. And I was able to say, God, you have been wonderful. The Hebrew word for wonderful is, I believe, it is a pala. Mm -hmm. Yes. A uh, pala is, uh, is a verb. It is based off a uh, noun of wonder, marvelous. So it expresses the idea of doing or making uh, a wondrous thing. Amen. It was found um, in the Bible. Uh, uh, it was found in the Bible and occurred 70 times. Uh, in the Hebrew Old Testament, mm. and the verb is found for the first time in Genesis uh, 18 and 14, mm. and that's when you know uh, Sarah, uh, uh, the angels came to the tent to Sarah and said that, "Hey, you're about to have a baby." She was like, "I'm old and stricken in age. <laughs> you know how in the world I'm gonna have a baby?" And then the uh, the question came out: Is there anything too hard for the Lord? That is my question I want to pose to you today. Is there anything too hard for, the, for God? For you and your time, this situation. I know that we're going through it. I know that sometimes have been hard and things seem like that they have been pushed up against you. But I'm here to say that is there anything too hard for God? Uh, Papa is uh, permanently, uh, is used permanently with God as his subject uh, expresses that are well beyond the bounds of human power or expectation. This idea is expressed by the psalmist. This is the Lord doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. In Psalms 118, 23. Deliverance from Egypt was the result of God's wondrous acts. It was, uh, it was with a stretched out hand that smite Egypt with, uh, with all my mighty wonders, which I do. Exodus 3.20. Praise is, uh, contra is constantly due God for all his wondrous deeds. You find that in Psalms um, 91. At the time, and, and at the same time, God does not require anything of his people to do. Um, it's too hard for them. And so this is where a lot of people get to the scripture. You know, God, you know, God won't put more on you than you can bear. Deuteronomy 30, 30 and 11. Although sometimes uh, may appear impossible to man is still uh, within God's power if it was marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of his people in these days should I also be marvelous in my eyes said the Lord of hosts next is Zechariah 8 and 6 what are some of the wondrous things God has done for you lately ah, so much. I need you to be able to see what God has done for you lately. The Bible says this. That. Now. Jericho. Was straightly shut up. Because of the children of Israel. None went out. And none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua. See. Somebody say see. See I have given. Unto you the hand of Jericho. The king thereof. The mighty men of valor. Uh, now the gates of Jericho oh let me read the NIV version so put the NIV version up there it says now the gates of Jericho were uh, securely um, borrowed because of the uh, yes. Israelites none went out and none came in let me just say this real quick to you that you got to be able to see yep. what God is doing for you in your life Hallelujah. You got to know. I'm jumping ahead of myself. What does my next slide say? I know. Okay, yeah. Three things. There we go. Three things you should know God has been wonderful. 
you realize, uh, the first thing I want you to realize is this, that's in our scripture. You have to realize that the thing that you're afraid of is more afraid of you than you are of it. All right. And so we see here in the scripture that uh, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Yeah. That means that although the Israelites may have been afraid to go inside Jericho because they had their mighty men of that, they had their men of war on the inside of that, inside of Jericho. But God said that you have to realize uh, that Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. That means that they were scared of them. So what's the thing that you're afraid of? Mm. What's the thing that you're afraid of the most? You have to realize that it's more afraid of you than you are of it. Some people in life don't move because they move in fear. Yeah. Some people don't do certain things because they move in fear. The Bible says that he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What is it? That you're afraid of? Are you afraid of sickness? Are you afraid of death? Are you afraid of disease? What is it that's stopping you going out on, on faith? Come on. What happens when, when fear grips your heart? You become stagnant. Mm -hmm. You don't go nowhere. Come on. You lose uh, your self-confidence, your self-awareness. Um, you lose focus on what the thing that you're supposed to be doing. So don't lose your focus. You have to know which way that you're going. The Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So uh, I had a few quotes here. It says, hope is our spirits, what oxygen is to our lungs. Let's hope and you die. They may not bury you for a while, but without hope you are dead inside. The only way to face the future is to fly straight into it on wings of hope. Hope is the energy of the soul. Hope is the power of tomorrow. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. It says, life without hope is a, vo is a voyage with no compass. Right. My God, that means you just go. The Bible says this. The Bible says that without a vision, my people perish. They, and that actually means that they, without a vision, without a prophetic unction, they cast off all restraints and they run wild. They just do any and every other thing. Next slide. It's true. Uh, optimist, is, optimist is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. You got to have confidence in this thing. You got to know that God is with you, that God will never leave you, that God will never forsake you. You have to hope. The Bible says that without hope, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Next slide. Faith is to believe what you do not see. Come on. The reward of this faith is to see what you believe. Amen. And that leads me to my next point. It says, no matter the situation, God has already given you the victory. You got to see it. You got to be able to see that God has already had this down for you. You got to see that your children is saved. You got to see that your neighbor is going to turn his life around. You got to see that your husband is going to be able to walk again and talk again. You got to be able to see that you're going to have a victorious life. You got to see it and move forward and believe it. The Bible, not the Bible, there's a song that says, I'm going to see uh, of your victory is that I want to see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord yeah. there's power yeah. hallelujah there's power in the name of Jesus every war he raged he will win oh I'm oh I'm going back down I'm not going to back down from any giant see you have to be able to see the victory this right here is telling me that you got to be able to see the giant that's in front of you. And you say, back up off of me. Oh, hallelujah. I need you to be able to tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
I see the giant. I see the thing that's in front of me. I see that God is about to do something for me, but there's a giant that's standing in my way. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw it in the towel. I'm not going to back. You need to just shout out, back up off me, devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because I know how this story ends. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turned it for good. Come on, somebody say, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Say, he turned it for my good. Hallelujah. And then my last point that I'm going to get out of your way really quick. It says uh, that... The reason why you know uh, one three ways that you should know God has been wonderful is that when you look back over your life and you begin to think things over, you can say all of my good days outweigh my bad days and I won't complain. Let me just tell you a quick story really quick. When I was a kid, when I was 18 years old, I should have been dead sleeping in my grave. But God said, no, me and a friend of mine, we were driving, well, he was driving me, and I was on the passenger side. And then all of a sudden, the, he was speeding down in Michigan, I-75, and he drove into, uh, I mean, he went, we, we, he hit the brakes, and we went down into the ditch and came up to the oncoming traffic this way. And so then, uh, today, when I think about that, today I have to give God praise because I know that God has been wonderful. Hallelujah. When I moved to New Jersey, all of a sudden I lost my house and I didn't have a place to stay. But through God's favor, he provided me with an apartment and allowed me to say, God has been wonderful. When I was stressed out and so bad that I thought that I was about to lose my mind, and God spoke to me and said, you're going to allow stress to kill you. And I said, Lord, I'm not going to let stress kill me. He gave me peace in my mind and he gave me peace in the midst of the storm. And it allowed me to be able to say, God has been wonderful. I'm about to give God praise because God has been wonderful. The scripture says, oh Lord, thou God. I will exalt thee and I will praise thy name. So on today, I need you, First Baptist Church, to be able to give God praise for everything that he has done for you in your life. I know that times have been hard, and I know that you don't want to quit, and everything has been coming up against you. But I'm here to tell you right now in the name of Jesus that God has been wonderful. And because God has been wonderful, you need to give him the glory. You need to be able to give him the praise. You got to realize that when the children of Israel, when they were circled around the city and they began to blow the trumpets on the seventh day, that the walls fell down. And I'm here to tell you on today that some walls are falling down for you. Walls of oppression. Walls of doubt. Walls of anxiety. Walls of lust. Walls of hate are falling down right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say the walls are falling down. Come on, say the walls are falling down. I'm here to tell you that because God has been wonderful, you should give him the glory and praise. Give him the honor. Don't allow fear to grip you. Don't allow fear to grip your heart. Because God has been wonderful. There's an old song that says so many wonderful things about Jesus. There's so many wonderful things about Him. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. He is a mighty counselor. He is a prince of peace. He's the everlasting Father. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. God has been wonderful. He's been good to me. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. It seems like that times have been hard and times have been rough. But we've been made and joy for a night. But joy, joy comes in the morning. I know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all.